Hi there, this is Chris, Champion the Cap Motor Legends. Now, I've got the white coat on today, and what that normally means is we're going to have a slightly more technical discussion. In particular, today we're going to talk about ECE 2206. Now, if you're a biker, and I'm assuming that anyone who's watching this video is a biker, this is important stuff. ECE 2206 is the new standard that has been set for the level of safety or level of protection offered by motorcycle helmets. It replaces an old standard called 2205. And it is important because this new standard heralds a new generation of even more protective motorcycle helmets. Only extremists, and in my view complete nutters, would argue with a proposition that a motorcycle helmet is the single most important item of safety wear that you can don when you're riding a motorcycle. Although I'm old enough just, I think it was back in 1973, I was 16, I wanted a motorbike, my dad wouldn't let me have one, but I can remember the setting up of the Motorcycle Action Group, the group that we know today as MAG, and they were set up purely to protest against the legislation surrounding the wearing of motorcycle helmets. And they did that on the basis that wearing a helmet would be an infringement of one's civil liberties. Well, we've come a long way since then. Recently, I've read stats that suggest that in a serious motorcycle accident, your chances of surviving that accident are increased by 40% if you've got a helmet and your chances of getting brain damage are reduced by 70%. So I can't really believe that many people are going to argue um, around the benefits of wearing a helmet. But that doesn't mean that helmets cannot be improved, they cannot be made better. Now, for many years we've operated to a standard, you might have seen it on the back of the helmet, you might have seen it on the strap, a standard known as ECE 2205. First thing I'll say is that's got nothing to do with the EU. So the fact that we've gone through Brexit, that we're no longer part of the EU makes no difference. We still have to comply with it. The standard actually comes, the ECE comes from the United Nations and that's the Economic Commission for Europe. So we are still obviously bound by that. The regulation, the specific regulation, the 22 in the 2205, Regulation 22 was agreed upon in 1972 as a, as a broad set of parameters. The first standard, came out in 1982, that was 2202, so the Second Amendment. In 1995, the Fifth Amendment, 2205, came out, but therefore that's a set of regulations that are nearly 20 years old. So you can see we are well due an update. Now, the test, the 2205 test mandates lots of different tests to the helmet. There are tests to the shell, tests to the strap, tests to the visor, tests to the field of vision, but perhaps the single most important test when we're looking at the safety and protective qualities of a motorcycle helmet are the abilities of a helmet to absorb energy in an impact. And this is important because what happens is when we have an accident, the helmet, let's say the helmet hits the road, that creates a sense of energy and that is going to, that, the force of that energy is going to send the brain rushing from one side of the skull across to the other side where it's going to meet the hard bone of the skull again and then it's going to rebound. And it's that, it's the damage that is done to the brain as it moves across the skull that creates brain, brain damage. And what we're looking to do, we want a helmet to absorb as much energy as possible to take the energy away, to spread it around the shell of the helmet so that the brain is slowed down as it moves across the skull from one side to the other. It's important because what you have to bear in mind, what you cannot forget, is that brain damage is permanent. It's one of the few organs in the body that cannot be repaired. We can learn how to live with it, we can learn how to compensate for it, but you cannot go to hospital and repair a brain. Brain damage is important and it's why the subject of helmet safety is so paramount. So here at Motor Legends, we've always been somewhat of the view that the ECE 2205 test was not, in some regards, sufficiently demanding. And if you've been to one of our IEM talks up and down the country, you'll know that we've spoken at length on that subject. After all, you can go down to your local Lidl and you can pick up an ECE 2205 accredited helmet for £25. And that says either something about the rigour of the test or the way in which it's monitored. We've been a, particularly of the view that the energy that can be transferred through the helmet, the threshold amount is not sufficiently demanding. I'm going to cheat the science here a wee bit because it's a little bit complicated, it's probably a little bit too complex for me, and I'm not sure it's totally relevant to a general review like this. But in essence, the
the maximum force that is allowed to be transferred through a helmet when a helmet is impacted on the shell, the maximum force that can be transferred for the helmet still to pass the test is 275 G. Now, the helmet will pass, it depends a little bit upon the duration of the impact, but at that threshold, at that pass level, the wearer will be left with a 97% chance of traumatic brain injury and a 77% chance of fatal brain injury. So in our view, that's not a particularly reassuring figure. And given this, we had hoped that the new test, ECE 2206, would dictate a lower threshold. So say 250G or 225G, but actually under ECE 2206, the threshold force is exactly the same, 275G. So disappointed in that on one level, but under ECE 2206, the impact is going to be greater. So the velocity of the impacts will be higher. So even though the threshold standard of 275G hasn't altered, the helmet is in fact, the helmet does have to meet a higher standard because it has to deliver no more than 275G in a much higher impact. Anyway, let's go on now and look at some of the other tests that form part of the new ECE 2206. Under 2205 and indeed under 2206, the ability of a helmet to absorb energy is measured by dropping it from a height onto either a flat anvil or onto a curbstone. In fact, it's a piece of metal that's shaped to resemble the corner of a curbstone. And what they do, they take the helmet, they put a magnesium head in here of a certain weight, they drop it down onto the substrate. The head is embedded, the magnesium head is embedded with sensors that are known as accelerometers. And when the helmet comes to a stop, those accelerometers measure the amount of energy that's been transferred through the helmet. Now, the helmet is dropped, as I may have mentioned, from a height of 7.5 meters. That equates to a speed, an actual speed of 17.5 miles an hour. Now, as a biker, you might think that's not particularly fast, that's not particularly reassuring, but most accidents don't involve us flying through the air and coming to a dead stop against something like a metal anvil. We hope that if we hit something with our head, if our helmets hit something, it'll be against something that absorbs some impacts like maybe a windscreen or the bodywork of a car or a glancing blow on the road or whatever. Under 2205, the helmet is impacted for these tests in five different places. So what happens, the helmet is dropped at different angles to hit five preordained places. There are clearly lots of other tests within 2205. So, for example, there's one that measures the rigidity of the helmet. The helmet is squeezed in a machine and it mustn't crack within the parameters of the test. There's a test to make sure that the helmet cannot easily roll off in the event of an accident. There's a test for the penetrability of a visor. A sharp metal object is dropped onto the visor from a given height and the visor must not crack or deform at that height. There is a test for the amount of peripheral vision that a helmet has. Helmet has to have a certain amount of peripheral vision. There's a test for the amount of light that has to be transferable through the visor. Now, we've already mentioned that in some ways we were disappointed that the new test didn't lower the threshold from 275 to something like 250. But the new test, instead of dropping the helmets from 7.5 meters, they're gonna be dropped from 8.5 meters, so a meter higher. So even though the threshold hasn't changed, which on one level is disappointing, the helmets are gonna to have to be made differently because they're gonna to have to withstand a higher speed impact. But there is also, perhaps to some counterintuitively, there's going to be Another test that involves dropping the helmet from a lower height, a height of 5.5 meters. So whereas under 2205, there was just seven and a half, with 2206, there's eight and a half and 5.5. And the reason they've done that is because some helmets, some high-end race helmets, can have shells that are designed to withstand high-speed impacts, but they are just too strong. They will not allow energy to be absorbed in a lower speed impact and once you want to have you want to be sure that when you buy a helmet that if you fall off in the car park or fall off in traffic at low speed that that helmet is not so strong that it won't absorb energy so the new test is better because you've got the eight and a half and you've got the five and a half another criticism of 2205 was that all the points of impact were known. I've mentioned that there were five different impact points and that led to a possibility that manufacturers could reinforce their helmets in those five given areas. So what's happening under 2206 is they've chosen another 12 areas, 
which gives a total of 17 areas. There will be the five main areas that have already been identified under 2205, but the testers at random will then select three from another 12. So manufacturers will not be able to reinforce the helmets in 17 different positions. So it makes sure that a helmet is going to work in a more uniform way. There's not going to be a way in the future of cheating the test. 2206 will involve a new test that wasn't part of 2205 for what are called angled impacts. It's pretty widely accepted these days that such impacts can cause serious damage to the brain. What happens is as you hit something at an angle as the helmet rotates, that can cause the brain to rotate inside the skull and as it does so that can cause tears in the structure, it can cause bruising to the, to the brain and of course that can create brain damage. So under 2206, for the impact tests, then the helmets are not going to be just dropped onto a flat anvil and onto a curbstone. They're going to be dropped onto a 45 degree angle. There'll be extra sensors put into the head form that will measure the kind of twisting forces of the helmet to make sure that they don't exceed the given parameters. There is an expectation. It's a little bit early, I think, to be definitive about this, but some of the thing that's coming, one of the things that's coming out of the testing already is that these tests look as though they're going to benefit rounder, smoother helmet. And of course, that's what our eye has been telling us for years, that their philosophy of a rounder shell is important to them in racing because it means that if you come off at speed, that as you hit the ground, the helmet is going to glance off and prevent those kind of forces. So it may be that in the future, we're all going to be riding around in helmets that are, that are going to have less of those angles and sharp points around them, that we're all going to be riding in helmets that are a little bit, or have shells that are a little bit smoother and rounder. Other tests that are going to come into 2206. Flip lids. They're now going to be tested mandatorily with the front chin piece both closed and open. That was an optional test in the past, but now for a helmet to pass the test, it has to be tested both open and closed. In 2206, there's a new test for the penetrability of the visor. There's now going to be a steel, a stainless steel ball shot at the helmet at a speed of 60 meters per second, which is apparently equivalent to a stone hitting the helmet at 130 miles an hour. Obviously, the test means that the visor cannot crack at that speed. There are some other tests, and one might think that some of them are less significant. There are a number of tests to do with the accessories, such as the drop-down sun visor. But one that I think is quite important, helmets like this, this is the Neotech 2 from Shui, have built-in comms. So in future, helmets have to be tested both with and without accessories like this fitted. So they will test it without the comms in and then with the comms in to make sure that it doesn't have an effect on the energy absorbing qualities of the helmet. Another thing they're going to do is test for the anti-fogging abilities of a visor. I don't think anyone's suggesting that this is going to replace the need for a pin lock, but there will be an expectation that a visor will have a certain amount of anti-fogging capability. There's another test for visors, but ironically it's been moved the other way. The light transmission test has been lowered from 50% to 35%, meaning that actually the manufacturers can now fit to their helmets slightly darker visors. Now, there's always been, as we mentioned before, a rigidity test to make sure that the shell of the helmet is strong enough. But now, if a helmet cracks at some point, if the, if the shell cracks at some point in the energy absorbing test, then the helmet will have to be tested in the rigidity machine again to make sure that even when it's cracked, it is strong enough to withstand another impact. There'll be some people, because let's face it, there always are some people who are going to be disappointed with the new 2206 standard. Some people will point out that in the drop test, the helmets are only impacted once in any given location, whereas under Snell, there are multiple impact tests. They will point out that under Snell, there is a puncture test and there isn't under ECE 2206. Personally, that doesn't bother us because what has to be borne in mind is that Snell comes out of motor car racing and the demands upon a helmet in an accident in car racing are different to the demands upon a helmet in motorcycle racing. So even though superficially it might appear that the standards are higher for Snell, they're not in our view. It's just a different test for a different set of circumstances. In our view, there is absolutely no doubt 2206 is going to usher in a new generation of safer motorcycle helmets. How much safer? Well, that's difficult, if not impossible to say. To say. For sure, existing helmets are not going to pass through this test. 225 helmets 
will not just pass through this test. And I say this because last year there was some rhetoric in the industry, in the trade, that some manufacturers would just have to put a new sticker on the helmet and they would pass through. That is not true. The number of new tests, the number of different demands upon a helmet are such that there's not a helmet on the market that's just going to fly through this test. Now, it is true, perhaps, that high-end manufacturers like Arai and Shui will have a bit of an advantage. They will have an advantage partly because they are involved in MotoGP. MotoGP has recently adopted a helmet standard that was put together by FIM, and ECE 2206 is related to that FIM standard. So if a manufacturer, because it's not just Arai and Shui, but if a manufacturer has been involved in MotoGP racing, they will have a bit of a head start. Also, I suppose the brands that are involved in motor racing will do more in-house testing. They will be testing already to a higher standard, so they will be prepared for this. But my view is that even Arai, with its brand new Quantic, which is going to be their first and only ECE 2206 helmet that's going to come out in 2021, even they had to develop a brand new shell for this helmet. Now, this is conjecture. No one's ever going to admit it. But I do wonder whether that is because Arai is known to have really strong shells and they work well in high speed accidents, works well in MotoGP. But I do wonder whether that shell was so thick that it didn't work on the 5.5 metre test where you need a more absorbent shell to absorb energy in a lower speed impact. They're not going to tell us, but one thing that we can deduce from this is that if Arai has to develop a new shell to get a helmet through 2206. Some of the other manufacturers are going to have a very hard time. And I think some of the budget brands will find it very difficult. One of the things is that, as we've already heard, I think the tests are going to favour a rounder shell. And if you're a manufacturer who's got lots of helmets out there with angular, sharp um, protuberances on your shells, you're going to find it difficult. I suppose the question is, should you abandon your 2205 helmet and grab the first 2206 helmet out there because it's going to be better? Well, I think that there are some problems with that. Initially, 2206 helmets are going to be very few and far between. Our eye will have its Quantic out. We think this will be the first helmet on the market. That's due in April. Shui, this helmet is the RF1400. This is an American model helmet, but this is basically the NXR over here. This will be Shui's first and only 2021 ECE 2206 helmet. This will not be through, we reckon, until the late summer. So my point would be if Arai and Shui can only get one helmet out this year, then it's going to take a number of years before there are going to be lots of 2206 helmets on the market. And I think it's going to be a long while before you can go into your local motorcycle shop, look at all the array of helmets, the different styles, and be able to choose all of them as 2206 helmets. Now, just in case you were wondering, retailers will have the ability to sell 2205 helmets, the existing standard, until June 2023. Personally, I think that deadline will be put back as it was frequently on EN17092. And I think the pandemic, people will make the excuse, it's probably a truth, that that has slowed things down. People are not going to be able to get these helmets out. Not every manufacturer is going to have all of its range out as 2206 by June 2023. But at present, that is the deadline. One thing you should know, however, is if you've got a 2205 helmet now or buy one before 2203, you can ride with that with impunity for as long as you feel safe in it. So where do we stand on helmets and buying helmets? I think all you can do right now is buy the best helmet that you can afford. If you've bought a top helmet from one of the top technical manufacturers that we've been talking about, that's as much as you can do. It's really as simple as that. Wait a little while, there'll be some better options out there, there'll be more helmets, but as long as you've got a good helmet, the best helmet that you can afford, that's as much as you can do.